I felt so foolish and ashamed for my attitude the day before and realized I'd have been sucker punched by the demons and I fell for it. By the way, those who don't know what a sucker punch is, is a term given to Mother Claire by Jesus concerning a strategy of the enemy he uses on us often. When we're having a good day and everything seems to go well, then all of a sudden you get a rhema, a word, or circumstance happens that sends you spiraling down, losing your peace, feelings of rejection, irritation, anger, guilt overtake you, and it feels like it came out of nowhere. That is a sucker punch by the devils. I had done the very things Jesus warned me about, presumption, and not going deeper in prayer, and discernment, because when I alerted the group that I was burdened for them and got the rhyme of pray for your children, many began to feel a sense of fear and guilt that they had done something wrong. A few reached out to me, telling me immediately the thought crossed their mind, uh-oh, what did I do? And they began to examine their hearts. So my presumption incited fear and insecurity in them. You see, demons of rejection always open up the door to suspicion, then to presumption, and then to judgment. I'm sharing all of this because it's such a common assignment in any form of relationship. The Lord has made many of us very sensitive in the spirit, and He has taught us that when we judge, criticize, slander one another, even in our hearts, in the spirit, an arrow or knife has been thrown at us and wounded us. Just like when you walk in a room and you're unsure but you can sense people are talking about you because there's an air in the room and you may begin to feel really insecure, vulnerable, and uneasy because you've just been wounded in the spirit. That is one of the greatest strategies of the enemy in any relationship to wound you where it hurts the most with arrows of rejection which lead you to be suspicious of those who've caused the rejection. Then you make presumptions in their actions and judge their motives, which always leads to a fall, because you're not called to judge anyone's motives. It's up to God to judge the heart, not us. But many times, we do it to justify the pain we feel, which I mentioned can be very real. This is so common in marriages especially, when you're feeling a keen sense of rejection from one who has vowed to love you. You begin to become suspicious of their actions and make presumptions in your heart and mind against them based on how they make you feel. And then you judge everything they do, which opens a door for demons of fear and insecurity to attack your spouse. Oh boy, I haven't been married yet, but I've definitely been there, and the Lord always admonished me in those situations. Without clear communication, honesty, and transparency, This can break up many friendships, groups, and marriages because the enemy has gotten you to presume something that wasn't even true. And worse, sometimes, something that was never there at all. Another thing is the demons are getting really clever and sometimes that slander, criticism, or gossip you're sensing is not coming from a human, but from the demons. Many times I've gotten gossip in the Bible Promises. And the Lord is warning me that there are demons that are gossiping about him to me. Can you believe their audacity? Yes, the demons are always telling lies about Jesus to us so they can break up our marriage and connection. They lie to us constantly about who we are to him, how he sees us, and his faithfulness. So we have to discern much deeper. The few weeks before, I kept getting rumors about being criticized and talked about. And I kept thinking, there's nothing going on in the community. And at this point, no situation had happened within the group. Then the Holy Spirit brought to my attention that the criticism was coming from the demons, not a person. I thought to myself, that was new for me. Usually when I get a rhema like that, it always indicates a situation with a person that has happened or that will arise. So we must examine ourselves and be careful not to presume anything anymore. Even when it looks like the Lord is confirming over and over again. (laughs) Let's walk more cautiously, bear patiently, and pray deeper to ensure what we're feeling and sensing is indeed true. And more importantly, where it's coming from. In all of this, I was humbled and sent out an email to the group to apologize for my terrible behavior towards them. And ask the Lord to forgive me for my wrong heart attitude. 
the encouraging thing is, in the midst of my humiliation, he gave me this beautiful reading I want to share with you guys that really encouraged me in the midst of this trial and my weakness to persevere in mothering souls. It's from the book in Sinu Jesu, where Jesus speaks to a priest, but I knew it was a rhema word for me. And Jesus began, All that is happening now is in my hands, and my love has ordered all things, even down to the smallest details, so as to make my care for you shine before the eyes of men. Thus will I confound the naysayers who doubt that I am at work in what you are doing by my inspiration. Go forward fearlessly and joyfully, trusting me absolutely to provide for you, to protect you, to feed you and clothe you, and to instruct you in the mysterious designs of my heart over you and over those whom I'm sending you. Some of those who are most in need of what I'm doing will resist and criticize it. Do not let the resistance and criticism slow the pace of your progress. The work is mine, and I desire to see it flourish, even if at times it seems that there's no hope and that all my promises have been vain delusions and empty fabrications of your own making. Such is not the case. It is I who have inspired this work in you, and I'll bring it to completion. It is a work of my sacred heart. To doubt what I'm doing here is to doubt of my love for you. My love for you will never fail. Be humble. Trust in my love for you. Be bold and act bravely. I am with you. And so long as you're faithful to the adoration that I ask of you, all will unfold according to my plan, and I will stand by your decisions and affirm the motherhood that is my gift to you. Stay close to me, and know that I am in you and with you, and every moment attentive to your prayers. I've gathered into this canicle, as into the hospital of my sacred heart, the brokenhearted, the empty, the fearful, and the lonely. This I will continue to do, for my heart is a refuge and rest of all who trust in my love. So God bless you guys until the next message. <laughs> please, please pray for me and pray for a wonderful, wonderful family as well.